So in this video we're going to look at connecting a external temperature sensor to our Raspberry Pi. This is based off of the fifth issue um, Raspberry Pi magazine, there's an article in there and uh, this video is based off of that. You're going to need a temperature sensing chip, the TMP102 and you need some pin headers and I've got all of this from hobbytronics.co.uk and there are plenty of suppliers in the US that you can get this from if you just google TMP102. There is a um, diagram of how to connect up your breadboard, which is uh, made available in the document pack. See the description field of this video. We'll be able to take the readings from the chip and output them to a website and graph them, which look very attractive, and we're able to plot that over um, a length of time. And there's a um, picture of what the final uh, breadboard should look like once it's been completed. It's quite a simple diagram. So uh, you have the top side of the chip. Um, and the bottom side of the chip. You can see on that top side there, I've just circled the actual temperature sensing chip itself. We're gonna need to make sure that it's facing up. So when you connect up your, and you solder the pins into the actual chip, you need to make sure that the, the actual temperature sensing chip is facing upwards and is uh, located at the top, and the long pins are at the bottom, which is with the markings. Uh, so when you actually plug it into your breadboard, uh, the temperature sensor is actually facing up into the, um, the air and not down onto the breadboard. Um, so you're going to need a, uh, a soldering iron and, and possibly one of those handy hand things just to make your life a little bit easier when soldering. Okay, so you have uh, two different scripts that will be run. The first one is tmp102.sh, which when run will actually uh, just output a simple um, uh, temperature to the screen. And what it does is it talks to the I squared C bus, that is what the chip talks on, and will take the temperature reading um, and read that. Um, back which is in a hexadecimal format and it will then translate that into a format that we can actually read in a normal uh, decimal format. The second uh, script is update.sh. What that does is it will run uh, the first script we just mentioned, the TMP102 script. It will then take that reading and it will um, send that to a uh, file called um, blank.jsom which will then generate uh, send.json, which we'll see in a moment, and we'll see the content of the actual reading in that. That send.json will be um, transmitted um, via a HTTP put request using this curl command here, and will then be uploaded to this website here, um, api.cosm, and it will be uh, connected and authenticated basically by this API um, string we have here, which will make our request uh, upload unique to our um, temperature reading. Um, that's what the blank JSON, which is essentially just a template. And once the script's been run, it will produce this file called JSON, which will read this unique value of the temperature sensor right now. And that is what will be uploaded to the website. Okay, so once you've got your breadboard connected, you need to go to the um, document pack in the video description here and uh, find a file called command.txt. In there you'll find um, a list of the instructions you're going to need for this example. So um, first thing we need to do is to update the um, app get repository. So run sudo apt get update. That will ensure that when we um, download tools we've got the uh, most up-to-date version. The next thing we're going to do is run um, the command sudo apt get install i2c-tools. Um, there's the command. What that's going to do is download the i squared 2 bus uh, interpreter, which will allow us to actually read from the chip. Then once that's done, what we're going to need to do is um, modify one of the uh, system files. So you need to run the command sudo nano to edit, and then we're going to um, edit slash etc slash modules. And what we need to do is to add two um, entries to that. And uh, you can see on that command file there the two entries. We just add them to that file. And then once this is done, we're then going to need to uh, reboot um, the Pi. So run the command sudo reboot. And that will uh, reboot our, uh, our Pi. So I'm just going to click restart. Um, I edited that quickly there. So we log back into the Pi. And make sure which path we're in. 
Okay, so we now need to um, add um, a user. Uh, when you copy and paste that, you might get uh, the dots instead of uh, dashes, so make sure you change that. And we make that change. And we need to log out um, of the Pi and re-log back in again. I've just skipped that quickly. Okay, so what we're actually going to do now is run the i squared c get command, which will actually read um, from the actual the actual temperature chip. Um, what it will return is a hexadecimal format, which is something that we can't uh, read easily. Um, but we can actually see that it is actually getting a successful um, response back from the uh, external chip. Okay, so we now run that command, and we can see that it returns. Um, a hexadecimal value, which means it's actually reading from the chip successfully, but it's not something that we can easily understand. So we needed to get a copy of those um, scripts. So make a directory for them to go into, um, mk, uh, dir, and then the uh, temp 102 directory. Change into that directory, um, and make sure you're in slash home slash pi slash tmp 102. Okay, you now need to run the command wget, and the um, path of the, um, the package file. So run that command. You should find that in the tx the command.txt um, document. And then run the command tar minus zxvf, and then the file name, which will extract all of those files uh, to your Pi. So now we've downloaded those files onto our Pi. We want to run that uh, script. So run the command dot forward slash tmp102.sh. And then we can then see how it actually returns a uh, temperature from the chip that we can actually understand. Okay, so open up a browser and go to the cosm.com website, uh, sign up for an account, and uh, once you've done that, log in. You can see here the temperature sensor um, graph I've set up earlier. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to remove all this data and show you how to set up your own and how you can actually take the temperature readings from the chip and then upload them to this site and graph um, your readings nicely. Okay, so we need to set up a new feed. So the first thing you need to do is click on the new feed button. And then uh, we want the something else we're going to be uh, setting up as. So we're going to say no, we're going to push our data to COSM. We're going to give it a name. I'm just call this uh, my living room temp, and you can say next to the next two um, options, and then create. It's going to give us a um, feed ID. So what you want to do is to copy that. Um, have a quick look at the um, command.txt file for reference, and what that will show us is that uh, you need to enter this into the um, xxx field. Um, on update.sh, so we use sudo nano update.sh, so we can actually edit that file, and then search for um, where we have xxx in the um, this particular script, and re replace it with the unique field ID they've given us for this uh, feed we've just created. Okay, save that. Okay, back to our website, and we're going to finish uh, creating that. Next thing you need to do is to set up a data feed. Okay, give it a name. I'm just going to call it temperature. That's our um, our data stream ID and uh, copy that and make sure we save that data stream. Okay, go back to our text file and um, we're going to edit the blank.json file. So sudo nano blank.json and we're going to find where it says yyy and that's going to be our data stream ID which we're going to call um, temperature. Okay, and again, save that file. And we're going to do the last one that's there. So what we need to do here is set up a um, API key. So we can actually authenticate to the site. So we go to keys. We then uh, click the X button for new. We then give it a name. This doesn't really matter. We then want to select all for all access uh, privileges. And then create. And then it's going to give us our API key. So copy that uh, information. Go back to the uh, file. We're going to see we're going to update the update.sh file. We're looking for the zzzzz um, parameter. So sudo nano update.sh. Find where it says zzzzz. Uh, replace that. There we go. And save that. And then what we'll find if you now run the command 
um, dot forward slash update dot sh, it will run those scripts and it should send a, uh, an entry a reading to the COSM website. Okay, um, we're just quickly going to click on that logo which will refresh the page and we can see now there's in the corner there is all of a sudden a line which means it's taken a reading. So if we just quickly run that again and uh, we refresh the page and what we're going to do is we need to filter this on the uh, time period we're looking at which is to say uh, five minutes and what we can see is there's uh, been one, two readings at that point in time. So there we go, there you have it. So it's all well and good being able to send um, information to um, this website by running the script, but what we actually really want to do is to be able to do this on a regular basis. So we want to be able to schedule how regularly we take these readings and how regularly we send that information to the website. So um, what we're gonna use is a, um, essentially a service called Cron. Cron is a, uh, a scheduler and um, it runs under almost all Unix or Linux based systems. Okay, so to uh, schedule this job, we need to edit the, um, the cron file. We can do that by running cron tab space minus e. And then what you're going to want to do is take the example um, script we've got there. So um, we're going to copy that syntax and then paste that into the bottom of the cron file. This uh, will run um, every single minute on the minute and we'll upload that information to that website. If you want to know more information about um, crons and scheduling, uh, drop me a comment field and I'll try and make a video on it. Okay, save that file and if you run cron tab uh, minus L, you'll see that that's been saved um, to the, um, the cron service. Okay, so what we need to do now is if we quickly run the command date, it will tell us the exact date and time on the Pi at the moment and will allow us to see um, when the, the uh, script is going to run. So you see there I'm just a few seconds off and I run again and uh, we go past the minute and that would have that would have run. Okay so I left this to run for a few minutes and um, there's the result you can see as it plots um, over time and uh, the longer you leave it obviously uh, the longer it gets I think there's a three month limit to it or something um, but there you go you've um, plotted your temperature from an external sensor. If you have any questions, please put them in. Thank you.